Welcome back to the Fit Dad Club podcast. My name is Travis Jones and I'm here with Jason Barrett. Jace, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing great. I feel fluffy. Haven't trained for like four weeks, uh, but I'm getting ready for a, uh, a trip to Singapore, which is really exciting. Um, I'm looking forward to the, the, I mean, I'm in WA, so I already have the hot weather, so I'm not really looking forward to that much. I'm looking forward to the humidity, you know, just going to just gonna enjoy getting my sweat on, uh, running around after the little ones. So no, nah, doing well, man. How are you? I'm good, mate. And for everyone listening, Jace hasn't not trained for four weeks because he's being a little bitch. He hasn't trained because he's got a bad back. Uh, but yeah. he's getting through that and we get back into the training. Um, Come back stronger. Exactly. Then just uh, I'll be an upper body beast. with a, <laughs> I'm gonna, Then I'm going to get a swole lower back that uh, no injury can touch. Oh, mate. Um, I'm doing good. It's been a good week. Uh, running and all the rest of it. Got a fun run this weekend. I'm going to try and hit the 10K under 45 minutes as a PB. That is my goal. Um, I paced one of the girls yesterday to like a 47 and I was like running backwards for some of it. So, um, trying to tell her to run faster. So I feel like I'm, it's going to be still a push, but I feel, feel like I'm, I'm on track for a PB and in 31 days from today, I got a 65 K ultra to run. So that is, that will be, will be my longest run I've ever done. Um, so we will see how that goes in the summer of Tasmania. Um, <laughs> so 12 degrees. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, oh, how could you survive? I know, oh, no. I know, mate. I know. And in saying that, shout out to CJ, one of the Fit Dad Club um, mm. boys. He embarked as of yesterday. He started on his journey, which is Project 60, where CJ's lost 40 kilos with us. He's gone from walking 5,000 steps in a day to running marathons. But now he's also. Un, for Movember, he's undertaken a goal to raise $100,000 and he's running 60 kilometers a day every day for 30 days, which to be honest is quite insane. Um, and mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> sounds like someone traveled do. Yeah, we just <laughs> maybe I implanted <laughs> some ideas in his mind. Um, but yeah. He's gonna. He's like past ten grand already. Um, he's day two today of his sixty k's and uh, of his sixty k's a day for thirty days. And you know, anyone find CJ? Um, I might try and put in a link in the podcast to to go donate to his Movember. I'll make sure that we can do that um, because mm -hmm. the man is has changed his complete life and inspiring a lot of people um, to change their life as well. But Movember is a big thing for him and we want to mm -hmm. make sure we support our fellow fit dads. So guys, if you want to donate to CJ, find the link in the podcast and um, give him a shout out because the guy is running 1800 kilometers this month, which is absolutely stupid. Um, Bonkers. My car <laughs> won't do that much this month. Exactly. So guys, what I'm going to do today and Jace is going to talk about how to win at life. And I think this is a big thing. It's like, Oh, you're not a winner. I was like, well, I don't care if you think I'm a winner or a loser or whatever you think, right? But I'm going to tell you how we think you can win at life and how to reinvent yourself in 365 days, right? So many people will focus on the short term, but at the end of the day, the long term really isn't 365 days. It's one year. It will pass either way, just like the last year has passed and the one before that. I feel like it's already November here and I feel like yesterday it was, you know, January. Um, September. Yeah, mate, it was uh, crazy. I'm, I'm a little bit shorter, more short-sighted. Yeah, it's like, mate, this year has absolutely flown. So today we're going to talk about mm. how to win at life and reinvent yourself in three, 365 days because, you know, we're, we're always progressing in life. We're either progress, you know, you know, growing or dying, essentially. We're moving towards our potential or our best self um, or moving away from it. And when I say moving towards our best self, I believe that we all have a potential in life and we are either moving towards that moment by moment, or we're moving away from that ideal self that we could have been, you know, the person that could have done the work. And I never want to look back personally and said, I should have, or would have, or could have, or any of those types of things, um, you know, when I'm laying on my deathbed and it's just, I want to try and win at life and constantly up level. It doesn't mean you don't fall on your face guys. Wing at life actually does mean you will fall on your face a fair few times because you're taking risks. You're you're shooting for the stars. You're trying to you know push the envelope of what your capabilities are and constantly trying to expand your comfort zone. So if you're not falling on your face at times, it means your goals weren't big enough and you probably aren't reaching your potential and you're trying to stay inside your comfort zone. So today, if anyone out there 
wants to do better, be better, impact more. That is what today's podcast is all about. And I think we all start with taking stock, okay? Because we can't, you know, look forward over the next 365 days with taking stock exactly of where we are right now. I think that is the biggest thing. So it's kind of like a stock take, you know, remember, pretend it's the end of the financial year and you're taking stock of what happened over the last year um, and what, what went what, right. What went needs wrong. to go on flash clearance. Exactly. Exactly. Probably your beers. Um, but <laughs> but what we, what we need to look at is we take stock of where we're at in those aspects of your life. And we always talk about this as far as your energy, which is your health and your well-being. You have your, your work and you have your relationships. So we want to take stock with what is going right and what is going wrong. Um, and where we really need to improve. And I think it's so crucial to look at all aspects of that, but the overarching aspect of all three of them, obviously this is the Fit Dad Club uh, podcast. And when you have a fit body, okay, it will come across into a fit financial bracket because that will carry over because your energy is better. You're going to be more confident. You're going to start being better at your job or your work or your business. And also you have a fit um, relationship, right? Because when you are living at a higher frequency and when you're feeling better about yourself, you're better to all those around you, your kids, your partner, or to be partner, whoever they are, you're just a better person. It's this spillover effect. When we live at a high frequency, when we have high energy, we just become a better person in all aspects of our life. So I want you to take stock of them, but I also want you to go, well, you know, take the biggest thing obviously is our fitness it's like you know it, where am i right now you know can i run a kilometer can i run five kilometers yes or no i want you to go well you know in a year if i actually pursued um these goals these dreams uh, you know what could i actually achieve in one year from now because one year is a long time it's a huge time okay we might say it like if you lost 500 grams a week which is very small um, for a year, that's 26 kilos gone, guys. That's 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 huge for a lot of people. As you know, if you start running one kilometer a day and just bumped that up each every fortnight by an extra kilometer, guys, you're running 26 kilometers a day. I'm not going to tell you to do that. Don't be like CJ. But what I'm saying is, a small progressive overload with these actions can be massive when we look in the scope of a year rather than just looking over the next two weeks. And I think the biggest thing what people do wrong is they look at for such short-term success rather than like zooming out, taking that thousand foot view and go, you know what, if I go all in, one year can completely change the trajectory of the next 20 to 30 years of your life. And it's, it's going all in for one year to make the rest of your life the best of your life. And I think that is the mm-hmm. phrase that I like. The one year the, to make it the, the rest of your life, the best of your life. And I think that's what we need to do, guys. It's actually zoom out and focus for one year. It's like take stock. Where is your nutrition? Where do you want your nutrition to be? Are you feeling lethargic? Are you having high energy? Where is your fitness? Where is your waistline? You know, where is it? Can you lift weights? Where is your back pain? Where is your mobility? And it's just it's zoom out. And then we can actually move forward. And I think the problem is most people don't take stock at the start of where they are and then have a bigger picture of where they want to be. So what happens is they're constantly just on the treadmill, never moving forward. They might go forward a little bit and then they come back. It's like up to, down to, and they're never moving forward. They're just staying in the same place or getting even more demotivated and every year just slowly regressing and going further away from what their potential could be. You take stock of where you are in all these areas and you've got, I think the next step for me is identifying, well, what is winning actually look like for you? Mm. And, but this is where you've got to be like super honest because there are some guys who, you know, and everyone will have their different level of standards. For some guys winning, they're not winning until they have a penthouse and they have a Lamborghini and a Rolls Royce and they're making, you know, hundred grand a week and they're just like, that's their level of success, right? Like, I don't even know if 100 grand a week. I mean, yeah, I guess yeah, that would be 5.2 mil. You should be able to afford a Rolls Royce eventually. <laughs> um, the, but like that might be their level of of winning. You've got to define that for yourself. Like there are going to be people who for winning, winning for them is having like a low cost, low, um, you know, low output, uh, you know, uh, like Minimalistic. homestead and they're, 
yeah, exactly. And then it's it's a it's a simpler life, and you're just spending time in nature and with your family. Like that might be it for some people. It's about building a business. It's about giving back. Maybe doing like you know keynote speeches or doing stuff like CJ, where he's giving back and doing this um you know and and, and doing these runs for raising awareness for men's mental health and suicide prevention and all of these great causes. Um, but the two there's two key um, human needs that we want to focus on when it comes to winning, and that's to grow and to give. Right, it's growth and contribution. These are two the two more spiritual uh, human needs that we have, which ultimately are the ones that if you can tick those boxes, like if you feel like you're growing and you feel like you're able to give back and contribute, even if it's just to your family and to the people around you, like some of your close friends, that's all that most people need. For some people, that need grows and is bigger and bigger. But if you constantly feel like you're growing and you're able to contribute and give back, that's like that will tick the winning box for like 90% of people. Um, but the, mo- the problem is most people, they're not, they're not looking for growth. They're not actively seeking growth. Um, you know, they, they think they're just like a plant. It just sits there and it's like, oh, I hope I get watered and I hope I get fertilized today. And then I'm, you know, plants don't give a fuck if they, they'll grow until they use up all their energy and then start to die, right? Trust me, gardening's fucking hard. Keeping a lawn alive is, 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 a, is a challenge. I've, I've, I've had my fair share of, of battles with a lawn out the back. But those are the two things I want you to keep in mind when we think about the idea of winning in life is, you know, where are you growing? How are you growing? And how are you giving back or contributing back? Um, those two are going to be a, a big, um, like when you're defining what does winning look like for you, those two are going to be a big contributor to you actually feeling like you are winning is are you growing and are you giving back? Mate, I think that's a big thing, right? And, you know, I've been on this earth a few more years than you. Um, and <laughs> I think, you know... Just a couple. I, yeah, just a couple, man. But I, I think I've been through uh, a lot of um, levels of myself. And when Jace is talking mm-hmm. about, and I'm not saying you haven't, but I'm just reflecting as you're talking on that, about my journey as well. And I think when we, Jace is talking about growth and contribution, that is our, our needs that really end up making us feel, feel fulfilled. Um, but mm. there's other ones, which is obviously connection, there's variety, um, then there's significance and certainty. And I think, you know, a lot of us attach happiness to certain areas. So I don't want you to chase, um, and this is just from my personal uh, view and my personal background of what's gone through for me. I was very, I was significance and certainty driven. And when we're, we're it's, that's, they're very extrinsic based goals or hedon, uh, hedonistic based goals. And when we achieve them, we think that we're going to feel great. We're going to feel happy. But, you know, the feeling is very fleeting when we feel that. And mm. I think that's the problem. You know, I had the Audi R8. I, I had the, the house on the beach. I had the, um, you know, traveling the world for six months of the year. I had a lot of things. And, you know, I had when I had one gym, I wanted four. And then when I was four, before I even got, um, when I got to four, I thought I'd be happy. But then I wanted 12 and then I wanted 20. And I kept getting these goals. And I thought that would make me happy. But it, it didn't because I was chasing, like, I was chasing these validation based goals because I wanted to be validated mm. based by society or status. Okay. And when we look at this, that can be another thing when we're looking at our health based goals. I want abs so people can see me have abs, for example. But if instead we change it to growth and contribution, um, which is what Jace is saying, it's very much more intrinsic and we start to focus on the journey a lot more right? That doesn't mean mm. you can't have data. Like for us, the goal for next year for Fit Dads is to help transform 1,000 dads' lives, okay, with health and fitness to make them feel and be better dads for their families. And that's our goal. So there is a data number, but for us, that's very much a contribution-based goal because if we can help more dads become the best version of them, then we're helping a thousand families. And the spillover fact from that is probably helping more families because, you know, you listening to us, you become better and then people become better around you because you're inspiring them as well. So our contribution goal is that, our growth goal, like who do we need to be? Okay, again, we reflect. So when we're taking stock, it's like, well, we know who we are now. Who do we need to be to grow the company, to inspire and have a thousand dads on board to transform? So we need to, how do we need to grow? How we want to contribute? And those two carry over. Well, you know, I can't be a fat. And then when we're looking at this, I can't be a fat dad to do that. That's not going to inspire people. That's not going to motivate people. So my health goals are interrelated with my growth and contribution based goals and my energy based goals. I need to maintain a high
high energy because I have a high amount of contribution I want to give. I need to continue to grow because I need, and I need, that means I need to have more energy. I need to be more productive. I need to have great time management skills. So if you have these, you know, um, upper tier based growth and contribution goals that, and it doesn't mean you all have to have this, but if you're listening to this, you might have goals similar, or you might have goals also that you want to contribute back. You might want to contribute back to your family. I want to, you know, make my kids really health and fit, or I want to help my kids do this sporting achievement, or I want to go on a, a family trekking holiday. I, I don't know, but you might have these. And for you to achieve your health and fitness goals, you need to grow in your education around training and around nutrition, you need to hit these health-based goals and then you can then contribute back to your family and your extended family and friends. And then that makes you feel so good. And and I, I talked about this, a lot of my guys, they say they have, you know, they, they've lost like 10 kilos, 20 kilos or 30 kilos. And they, you know, six months later, have friends message them and they say, oh, I saw you lost weight and it motivated me to join the gym and I'm 10 kilos down now. Or they've joined the Fit Dad Club and they've started to lose weight and they told their friends, they didn't even tell them they joined at the start because they're like, oh, I don't want to tell anyone. But they reached out to us and they've lost weight. And it's like, you know, getting messages that not only because you focused on becoming the best version of you, you inspired your friends and families to start becoming the best version of them. I think that is huge okay so mm. if we scale back and it's like how would i like to contribute back to my family and my extended family over the next year and what would that look like and how does that flow into my goals i think that also gives that deeper purpose and deeper why around that and remember guys this is how to reinvent yourself in 365 days and how to win at life because you know and every year you can do this we want to be reinventing ourselves constantly and you know, that all that does is like, how can I grow? How can I contribute? How can I become the best version of me? hundred mm, percent. A lot of people gatekeep, as you were talking about, they gatekeep happiness behind achievement and behind those sort of physical things. And the reason why a lot of people do that is because they think, all right, well, if I don't can make myself miserable now and have that carrot at the end of the road, um, you know, I, I fucking, you know me, I love my carrots, right? Um, <laughs> if I don't have that carrot there, I'm not going to be motivated to chase it, right? If I feel too happy now, then I'm not going to be motivated to achieve any of these goals, whereas that's complete bullshit. You can be happy and fulfilled in the process and in the journey. It's just, as you say, having a powerful enough why as to the end result. It's like, oh, I, I was to be really happy serving, you know, the 100 dads or so, you know, the, like I've got to think about 80, 85 guys I'm working with at the moment. Um, I'm still really happy serving these. Do I want to serve more? Yes, but I'm still really happy that I'm able to impact the people that I am that doesn't detract from the fact that I still want to impact more just because I am really happy. The fact that I'm so more, I still got the hunger to do more because that, that's, that's it's, you don't need to gatekeep your happiness no. is what we're saying. So um, this is all, you know, this is that thousand foot view of your life. Where are you? And there's some bigger questions in here that it's worth sort of taking some time away once the podcast is done and thinking about or re-listening to certain bits to really get clear on, well, where are you at in your life? And the second part of that is taking ownership and saying, well, I am the reason why I'm in this situation. I am the one who has created these circumstances. And it, that can either be for, you know, for some people, it's really, they think it's disempowering. It's actually really fucking empowering mm. to take control of your life and say, I'm the one who did all of this. And we've talked about this time and time again. You take ownership for, you can't take ownership for the good without also taking ownership for the bad, right? And the, and the less than good and the learning experiences. So you've got to take the whole thing and you've got to say, this is what I have created and that's it. I've taken ownership for where I'm at right now. And you also, but in doing that, you allow yourself to take ownership for where you're going to be. Right. A hundred percent. I think the biggest thing with this is, you know, so many of us want to take credit for the good stuff, but we want to blame people for the bad stuff. It's like, no, dude, like, you know, either you didn't control your emotions, you didn't control your hand to your mouth, you didn't control pressing snooze, you didn't control so many things, right? Like our life is in our hands, you know, and that doesn't mean people can't do things to you, but you can still choose how you respond. I think that is also in ownership that people don't realize. Everything in life is all about your responsibility, right? And that ownership and responsibility is your ability to respond to internal and external factors. So you have to go, well, 
currently if i'm looking at clear data i'm 120 kilos and i should be 100 i should be 90 kilos i have to take ownership like i did this to me and because i did this to me i can then change this and it's so empowering to say it like that if you start blaming other people oh no work's been tough and oh my wife doesn't want to cook a separate meal it's like what you're doing is you're pigeonholing yourself to saying well when work's tough again i'll put on weight when my wife doesn't want to cook separate meals or i need to eat separately to my wife to lose weight so what you're doing is you're putting these constraints around being a fit dad when in reality mm. there isn't the constraints right you have the control right you, you just do you know, if it's not the dinner you want, you just don't have the dinner. Oh, but I'll be hungry. Yeah, okay, maybe you will be. But like, you'll eat breakfast the next day. Or you can just make something yourself. It's like, you know, we, we so are in this immediate gratification-based society. We need to stay stand back, take complete ownership. If you're not the fitness you are, oh, my knees are bad. I can't train. Well, what are you doing to fix your knees, right? Well, mm. one, your knees are probably bad because you're carrying 30 kilos extra weight than you should be. Um, and then, you know, are you doing stuff to strengthen your knees? Oh, I don't know what to do. Well, are you seeking someone to tell you what to do? No. Well, take ownership. Your knees are bad because you've done nothing about it, right? That That's the ownership. Oh, I, 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 I can't lose weight because I don't know what to cook. Well, have you done a cooking course? Have you have you have you learned how to cook? Have you like Uncle Jason's uh, Fit Dad's cooking course? Exactly, coming soon. Coming soon. But I, I think what you have to do is like everything there. You go well. I don't know this. Well, am I doing something about it? No. Then what you're not changing, you're choosing, <laughs> guys. What you're not changing, mm. you're choosing. Oh, I'm a hundred. I'm in 120 kilos. Well, are you changing that? No. Then you're choosing 120 kilos. Have you got abundance of energy? No. Well. That means if you're not changing it, then you're choosing to have low energy. It's very simple. When we boil it all down, when we take ownership over things, you're at fault. And you're the person that gets the high fives over all the great and all the bad. That's okay. But as soon as we start to take ownership, that becomes a line in the sand. Because you need to do this. You need to do, whether you do it externally, we need to do it internally. I, like you have to go. It's like, I take ownership for this. And because I do, I can change it. Until you do that, you'll never be able to change it. You'll never be able to change your life. So again, guys, what you want changing, you're choosing because we need to have no more lies. And I think that's the, the biggest thing. When we're taking ownership, we stop lying to ourselves, right? We, have, we stop blaming other people. We stop justifying poor behaviors. We stop making excuses for what's going on. We just stop lying. You know, we are so good at lying to ourselves, not to everyone else, but I'm telling you, every single person out there is so good at lying to themselves. They don't even, they're so good at it. They don't even realize they're lying anymore. I think that's the funny thing. I'm training hard. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll 100% get up tomorrow morning and do it. No, you won't. Don't, don't bullshit yourself. Um, it, it, is, it is so rough because we know oftentimes that we're lying to ourselves. Like deep down, like when you give it more than half a second of thought, you're like, I know I'm just kind of bullshitting myself. I know that's like, that's, I'm not going to do that. We're not going to go to the park. Oh, maybe. No, you're not. You're lying to your kids now too. <laughs> um, so you, you've just, yeah, you take, part of taking ownership is just stopping the, the bullshit. But to me, the ability to not lie to yourself has to come with presence and space. Mm. You've got to give yourself the space because sometimes you, you've got, um, especially when you first get started, right, trying to better yourself, trying to improve your mental thought patterns, right, which is what No More Lies is. You're essentially taking control of your mental thought patterns. It requires space and it requires time and it requires you moving through the initial a knee-jerk response that you have when you see something or you hear something. You think, oh, I can't do that. Oh, no, my knees are fucked. I can't do that. Like, that's your default response that you've conditioned yourself into. If you then just move on with your day and continue on with your distractions and your snacks and whatever else, then you'll never question that thought. But you've got to give yourself space. And you've got this is the whole reason why we talk about, you know, putting down your phone and becoming more present and meditating. It gives you the space and the chance to catch those sort of thoughts and rain, like rein them back in and say, hang on, no, that's not... That's not 100% true. And sometimes it requires you voicing it and requires you talking through it. And then after a minute, you know, it's like in an argument, you're halfway through and you realize, yep, actually, you know what? I fucked up. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. You know, uh, try, trust me, guys, take that, use that in all of your arguments, conversations with your partner. If you realize you're wrong, admit it hard, admit it early, uh, and it will just diffuse it. Boom. 
done. Um, only if you realize you're wrong though, right? If you're right, just fucking ride that, ride that thing all the way down. Um, but you've got to give yourself the space and the time to process and to, to kind of change that thought pattern and kind of, and, and recognize it for what it is and shift it. So part of no more lies and taking ownership is, is presence is, is giving yourself space to recognize and change your thought patterns from the lies to the truth. Mate, I completely understand and agree with you. I think when we say there's no more lies, I think that the easiest way to do it is like only say the truth, right? Mm. You know, when we say to our kids, the kids are like, oh, will you play with me? And you say later just because you want to try and diffuse it and you damn well know it's not going to be later. Like, just don't lie. Just stop lying. Mm. Like, just go, 100%. Not, not today. Like, I'm really busy today, not today. Or whatever reason you're having, but if you say you're going to do it later, then you do it later. It, like that you're having self-respect and self-integrity. Cause if you say lady to your kids, one, you're in grant and you know, it's going to be, so you're saying, Oh, it's okay to lie. So my brain, mm -hmm. my subconscious is learning. Okay. Lies are fine. Um, but what they're doing is like, well, dad lies. So I can, I can as well. You're like, no, you do what I say. Not as I do. It's like, that's not how it works. <laughs> that's yeah. just not how it works. So I think, we need to say the truth. We actually need to be real with ourselves and it'd be a bit more raw as well. I think if you say you're going to get up, oh, I'm going to start waking up at 4 a.m. and work out. Well, like, are you going to? Because unless you're going to, don't say it. Like you need to have integrity with your word, with yourself. Okay. If it's going to be 4.30 or 5 o'clock, I'm going to start training an hour a day every day. It was like, okay, can you do that? Oh, most weeks. Well, every week? No, then don't say it. I'm going to like those people that, you know, get blind, blind drunk. Oh, I'm never going to drink again. Well, you are. I know you are. I, like, you know, you are. So then stop creating these lies. And you're like, oh, that's just a, a, you know, a saying. Yeah. But it's a saying that your brain, your subconscious doesn't know it's a saying. It all is a saying. The words are coming out your mouth and then you're lying again. Right. So you're training yourself that your word is absolute shit. Okay. You can say, fuck, I'm really hung over today. Like, and I shouldn't drink that much. And that's, mm. that's good. Okay. Perfect. But to say I'm never drinking again. No, that's not good. So only say the truth. And that comes with, as you said, Jace presence, but it also comes with planning because mm. sometimes we don't even mean to lie. Right. <laughs> so if you like, you need to look and actually be better at time management. You need to be better at planning out your week. You need to be better at planning out your day. You need to be better at energy management that we'll talk about. So I think if we can get it, be more present, be better at planning, stop re, like just talking shit, okay, to ourselves and others, and also then reflecting. Because as you're trying to plan things and as you try to say, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, sometimes we believe we can fit more in a day than we actually can. It's just a human thing and that's all right. So you, if you reflect on that, I thought I could fit this much in. I clearly can't. Well, next time I'm going to try and only fit this much in. Um, mm. So you reflect and go, oh, wh where did I lose time today? Where did I lose space? Where did I lose my energy today? So if we're reflecting on the daily, we can constantly keep up leveling ourselves to reinvent ourselves. And if we reflect back weekly, okay, I wanted to hit four sessions. I need to, wanted to hit 70,000 steps. I wanted to do an hour of uh, playtime on the weekend with my kids. I wanted to jump on the trampoline or whatever you wanted to do. Did I do it? Yes or no? You reflect and then you can project. You can never project forward without reflection. That's why we talked about taking stock at the start, but you need to you know, do a mini reflection daily for 10 minutes. And what happens or five to 10 minutes and at the end of the week, the weekly reflection takes like 15 minutes max because you did a daily reflection. Or if you get to the end of the week and you try and do a weekly reflection, it takes a long time. People don't do it. Then they never take stock over the week and they find it very hard to progress forward or project forward and move forward in a constant and consistent manner. I think, remember, consistency is the biggest thing. Like one great meal doesn't make you healthy and one shit meal doesn't make you fat, right? It's the consistency over time that actually does it. You know, when we get like nine good ones and one crappy one, right? We have 15 workouts and we miss two days. I think it's like the consistency over time. And I think a big thing with No More Lies is that self-integrity of if you said you're going to do it and you don't feel like doing it, you just do what you said you would do. I think this is the biggest thing is, oh, I don't really feel like, well, did you say you're going to do it? Yes. Well, you do it, man. 
And then next time mm. you're going to learn not to say you're going to do it. <laughs> That's okay. But you have integrity with yourself. You have self-respect because, you know, you have the athlete's mindset because that's what you are. The best version of yourself is the athlete version of you. And when I say it doesn't, I'm not saying go and try and be in the Olympics. Okay. But there is an athlete version of you and there's an amateur version of you. Every single person has it. And the amateur version of you only does what they want to do when they feel like it, or they're always waiting for motivation. You know, they're the weekend warrior. And there's the athlete version of you that's constantly striving to being the best version of them for your partner, your kids and yourself. And they do what they say they're going to do, even when they don't want to. And I think that is the trait that we want to try and master. And mm. doing this is moving on to like, when we want to win a life, we need to really start to understand what we actually have control over. Hundred percent. By recognizing and and realizing that you actually have a lot more control than you think, you have control over a hell of a lot more than you think you do. Because ultimately, you have control over your uh, response, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and you have control over your emotions. A lot of people think that they don't, but you do. You've got seven seconds. Is after an event, after a, a stimulus, or after something happens, you've got seven seconds where your response is out of your control in terms of like, you've just got an immediate snap response. Um, you know, someone's coming at you with a bat, you know, the car's coming, swerve, whatever. It's like your emotions are out of control in those moments. Someone slaps you, right? You're pissed off for seven seconds. Anything after that is a choice. You're choosing to hold on to that emotion. Um, and the better you can get at being present and, and recognizing what you're feeling and then letting go of that shit, the more you'll realize that you are the one who's in control. And there are some things, guess what, that are out of control. It's, what is it? Give me the power to change the things I can, um, I can't accept and accept the things I can't change and the wisdom to know the difference. You've yeah. got to have that mentality and you've got to look at, I've talked to some guys, I'm like, all right, cool. Well, we can't get around the fact that, you know, I've got one of my guys whose uh, wife works 12 hour shifts and she does um, shift work four days of mornings, four days of nights. And he's got like a, a big crunch at work at the moment. And I'm like, all right, cool. So we can't change those hours, but what we can change is your ability to prep your food, right? Some easy, simple things that you can have in the fridge and the freezer that you can microwave and be done in like five minutes. So it doesn't mean you have to prep dinner. It means you can take away that time. That's something that's within your control. So let's fucking focus on that. I got one guy who had uh, had whooping cough, right? And uh, he got that right after he did the, the bridge to Brisbane. I was like wiped out for a week. It's like, fuck, that's something that we can't control. And at the moment, um, you know, time is just really, really limited for him. I'm like, cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by inching forward by doing one thing. And we'll talk about this later as well. One thing to move the needle forward. And for him, I'm like, I don't care if, you know, with your ability to recover with a whooping cough and that sort of stuff, if that's one set of pushups to failure, and then you do a drop set, you go from your toes to your knees and you do that. Cool. You've done something. Just fucking do that each day. And it's about getting that mentality going. But that comes with understanding what you do and don't have control over. Sometimes your hours, you don't have control over. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you're working a bit of extra overtime and you're doing little bits here and there. And it's like, well, what's more important to you? The time with your family and the ability for you to unwind and maybe work out and do that kind of stuff or that extra hour and a half of overtime? What is the, the trade-off there? You have control of that. You have control over what you put in your mouth. You have control over what you say to your partner and the time that you spend with them and the things that you say to your kids and all of this stuff that you do have control over. You've got to start putting things into buckets. All right, what don't I have control over? Don't spend any more fucking mental energy worrying about that shit, right? It's like, all right, that is what it is. And it's like a lot of people are, oh, but that's like victim mentality. It's like, well, there's some things that you can't change. Right now, you might be in a job or in a role. It's like, unless you're planning on leaving that job, which again, is a possibility. That's something you have control over if it's that fucking bad, right? You have this seek.com. It, it exists. You can find things, right? Seek and you shall find. But without doing the audit first and saying, well, what do I do and don't I have control? Of? If I'm staying working here, I don't have control of the hours over this period and I don't have control over traffic, right? Can I ask to work some days from home? Um, can I go change my hours to work earlier so I don't get the traffic so my commute is shorter, right? What are these things I can do? Can I you know, work an extra half an hour and have a bigger lunch break so that I can go work out in the middle of the day uh, at the office? Like, What are the things that you can control and the things you can do. And you realize some of you are like, oh, fuck, I didn't realize there was that many options. Yeah, there's plenty of options, right? Most employers want their, you know, uh, employees to be, to be fit. Yeah. Yeah. And they want them to be happy. They want them to be yeah. like, all right, I want to create a flexible workplace. Unless you're working for, you know, one of those big companies like, right, everyone back in the office now, because we're spending a million dollars a year on rent. Um, 
yeah, you know, want you to be happy. And that if they can create an accommodation where you're not, where you're still more productive, uh, probably more productive because, you know, you're getting some endorphins in, you're beating that afternoon slump where everyone else is get, eating a pie and you're, you're energized because you went and did a workout over your lunch break. Um, that would be great for them. So you want to find win-wins in your life, but you also just want to take control over your life and say, right, what do and don't I have control over? And the biggest thing you have control over is yourself. Mm. And I think when you're saying that as well, mate, it's like, you have control of yourself, your attitude, uh, your effort and your attention, right? Mm. So it's like where we place our attention normally dictates our attitude. So you, you know, and you, you know that you're going to be in traffic and every single day people complain about the traffic. Well, it's like you chose, you chose to drive in it, to drive in that traffic. And they're like, oh no, I didn't. I have to go to work. It's like, you chose that job. No, I didn't. I, I had to do this job to make money. I was like, well, you could have done, you could have do any, any job, do another job, do a different one. Oh, but this one pays well. Yeah. So you chose that one. <laughs> mm. So you chose that traffic again, guys, ownership. We're so good at lying that we don't even realize we're lying. So it's like, mm. we, we have to go, well, I chose this job and you know, there's people that are bitchy and blah, 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 all the rest of it. I don't care. You chose it. You chose to be in the traffic and because you chose to be in the traffic. If that's something that frustrates you, just put some podcasts on, maybe the Fit Day Club, mm. put some music okay. on, put, listen to whale noises. Like, I don't care what you do, do something that will make you feel <laughs> good. I go through traffic going, <laughs> Coco, Coco. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> What's the cockatoo doing in the ocean? <laughs> exactly. Um, so when, you, when you're doing this, guys, make sure that you understand where you place your attention will also change your attitude you can place your attention like how how lucky am i that i'm get to drive to work rather than walk for two hours okay to get to this job right like maybe like it's an hour commuter or a two hour walk and that's how crappy your traffic is oh, so, man i was watching um welcome to wrexham last night that mm -hmm. have you seen that show yep. yeah um i watched the episode last night where they talked about the tragedy that happened in like the 1930s where the coal miners get lowered down imagine this was your commute getting fucking wheeled down by a, a rope in a metal box half a mile into the ground to go be a coal miner. What if that was your commute, right? You could just sit in a comfy air conditioned box, uh, listening to your tunes, you know, sitting down, relaxing basically. And then every now and then accelerating and slowing down. Fucking the, the gum that comes back to perspective. It's just a reminder that fuck, I would hate that commute. Yeah, man. Like attention, it's perspective, attention and attitude. Right. And I think perspective mm. is the big thing as well. Right. Like, you know, I, I can't remember the guy's name, but he hasn't got any legs and, um, he's actually a great motivational speaker. I can't, it's lost his uh, name off the top of my head, but I think he just did Everest. Voici? Yeah. I think he just did Everest. Again. Right, he did Everest anyway. Did he? Yeah, oh. man. <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ. Exactly. No, no, oh, my back's my, no, my back's sore. Yeah. No, and this is what I'm getting at, right? Perspective. It's like people are like, oh, I can't train. I've got a sore back, or I've got a, uh, I've don't have time, or I don't. Uh, we're so we're so focusing on the lack rather than what we do have. Stop focusing mm. on what you don't have. Start focusing on we. I do have a job. How great's that? I can afford a gym membership. You know, I, I do have the ability to put food on the table. How good is that? It's like this guy doesn't have legs, and he's like, well, I've still got arms. Like, like he's focusing rather than not focusing on the fact that oh, poor me, I don't have legs. He's like, wow, look at me, I still have arms. I have arms, and because I have this, and because I have a heartbeat, and because I can talk, I can do anything. I can do mm -hmm. anything that my arms will let me do, right? And I think we're so focused on the scarcity and the lack-based mindset. We don't focus on the abundance-based mindset because so we're shifting at that attention, which then allows us to shift our attitude. And I'm not going to harp on this event anymore. I feel like we've got it. Change your perspective. I think it's such a crucial thing. And mm -hmm. stop being such a fucking negative, Nancy. Sorry, Nancy. Just so negative. Um, yeah. But that, so it's understanding what we have control over. And I think, you know, with the stimulus and response, Jace, you know, these things happen to us and then it's helping people understand they have the ability to respond. And Victor Frankl said it, I think at best, and I'm going to bastardize his quote right now. It's like, you can do anything to me except take away my the last of the human freedoms, which is to choose one's own way in any given circumstance. The guy was in the Holocaust, right? Uh, I think if he can say you can do anything to me, but take but you can't take the way, the ability for me to respond in the manner that I choose. That's what he was saying. So you mm. can punch me in the face, but I choose 
where how I respond to that. You know, you can take away anything from me, but I can choose how I can respond. I think that's so crucial. Stop saying you don't have a choice and remember you have every choice. Every choice that controls you, your mind, and your actions. You choose it all. And because you choose it all, you get to choose whether you get to reinvent yourself and win at life over this next 365 days. And it all happens by setting a vision. It happens by setting an inspiring fucking vision. Make it inspiring. Make it something that's going to fucking get you out of bed in the morning. Like, not just, oh, I want to lose 10 kilos. Like, that's not inspiring. Like, you cast that picture. You mentally, like, daydream about what your life, if you went all in, if you went all in for one life on focusing on being the best version of you, just stop complaining, you change your attitude, you set your frequency up, you optimize your energy, and you just control that stimulus for a response. You become that bad motherfucker who's disciplined and just goes for it in one year. What could your life be? Like, it could be completely different. I've seen it happen to so many guys and their vision wasn't even that clear. I just kept kicking them in the ass. <laughs> and all of a sudden they're like, they look back a year later, they're like, man, like I'm running, doing the, the water bottle for my kids all weekend for his, under, his uh, seven aside match. He's like, I never even dreamed I could do this and be on the footy field with my son. He was like, man, it was the happiest moment of my life. When I was mm. fat and overweight, I, I knew I, I didn't even think I could do it. It wasn't even a dream because I didn't think that I could be that dad. And we lost the weight and he did like fucking set inspiring visions that, that I like set in a vision where I am going to be the water bottle, <laughs> the water guy, the water boy um, for my son's seven aside weekend. I'm going to run a half marathon with my son. I'm going to do this. I don't care how crazy it is. We're all about cre achieving crazy shit here at the Fit Dad Club because that's what life's all about. So make sure your vision is inspiring, that it revs you up in the morning going, yeah, fuck yeah, this is who I'm becoming. And in the process of achieving that vision, the person you become inspires and contributes back to everyone around you. I think that's a really cool thing. Mm, yeah, I agree. It's like, it's got to get you out of bed. It's got to get you like pumped up because as you said, like everyone wants to lose 10 kilos. Oh, that would be nice. It's like things that would be nice aren't inspiring, aren't motivating. So yeah, for me, it's like, I want to be so good at, uh, I want to be so generally fit that no matter what sport my kids want to do, I want to beat them at it. That's, that's, that's inspiring for me. I want to, I want to be the, that, uh, that multi-talented dad. I'm like, I hope they start with tennis because that's the only one I have any kind of main, <laughs> main skill with. I'll, I'll work my way up with, just start with racket sports. Mm. Um, but if you, if you, start by setting a vision and we call I've, I've in the past talked about it as like a compelling vision something that like pulls you towards it but there's a quote that it's important for you to remember and that's that you don't know what the life of your dreams will be when you're living the life of your dreams so Dude, like you if you don't know like what is possible and what you're capable of then it's going to be difficult is you're going to be almost like dissociated from that vision because you're like oh fuck that as as you're saying that's never going to happen for me but that's when you need someone to pump you up and kick you up there and say no 100 percent, that's happening you got to look at well has I have other people done this and I'm like fucking guys without legs have climbed to Everest base camp. Yes, there's guys who have gone from being overweight to, you know, running with their kids. That's 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 small fish, right? That's 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 small stuff on the big scale of things. So if you aren't feeling like, oh fuck, that's not possible, Google like and this again where attention comes into it. Google and look up guys who have done this, you know, inspirational stories of people who've gone from overweight to massive achievement. Like it is possible, right? You've just got to be stop being like, oh, that's all well and good for them. There's no difference between them and you, except they put the fucking work in, right? And they said, no, nah, this is important enough for me that I'm going to make it happen. So that's, again, when it comes back to choice, what are you choosing? Dude, because like, I, so many dads will say, oh, I just don't, I'm so busy at the moment. I don't have mm. time to train. And then so many other dads will say, I'm so busy at the moment. I can't afford not to train. <laughs> so there's a big difference right i'm so busy mm. at the moment i don't have time to train or i'm so busy at the moment i can't afford not to train because i know it just makes me feel so much more on fire it means i can get mm. through my days better and again it's where we place our attention it's the justifications we say to ourselves. i think you know the busy people of the world who are trying to do it all 
still have fitness involved because it know they know that it increases you know their focus their cognitive performance their energy levels endorphins they start to feel better they get more productive they're more confident like man i can list a hundred things that makes you do but like not having time to train is not like something on there like it hmm. just there's nothing bad about it it just makes you be a better version of you so a common humanity is the big thing. If you don't feel like uh, when we're looking at this, like we have people around us that support this vision, then we need to, and we have essentially like what's called, it's like lower companions, right? And like, mm. you have to understand that can be time to cut the slack. Like it has to be, you have to go, well, I, I've got this vision that I want to achieve. And it's like, oh, but that means I can't, because I have this vision of the best version of me and doing these things with my kids or doing these things with our partner or doing these things. Like one of my boys, like he literally just um, hiked. Um, what's the Papua New Guinea trek? Um, Kokoda. Yeah. He just did Kokoda with his wife. Right. Um, and every six months he does stuff with his kids. Like he did this massive thing in, in the outback earlier, six months ago. But again, before that, he's like, I never could have had that time and thought I could have done this with my partner because I wasn't healthy mm. or fit enough. So what he's doing is creating these vibrant, like light bulb moment memories that he'll be able to look back on for the rest of his life every six months because he has the health, fitness and vitality to be able to do it. Like these core memories that he's creating because he has now this higher frequency energy. And I think, you know, with this, it raised his frequency, raised his vibration of his partner. They're getting fit. They're healthy. They're doing these cool, crazy, fucking great things. They're not just like sitting next to a pool. They're like, let's create some memories. Um, and they're doing this crazy stuff. But like with this going, well, if I've got this vision, this compelling vision of who I, I want to be and who I'm becoming, you know, well, you have to look around. It's like, well, are my companions, my friends are they currently doing are they supporting this vision or detracting from this vision? It doesn't mean you don't let, it, let them all go, right? But you might need to take a hiatus, right? Or press pause just for the mm. next 12 weeks while you need to cement your new habits. Because if you still got all these people that trust me, every single guy will, oh, will say to you, as they start to lose weight, they might start to make fun of them. You know, people doing worse than you will always hate on you, right? It's a version of hating. Oh, you don't need to keep losing weight. Oh, you're looking too skinny. What are you trying to do? Or, and they like say like, you know, this, oh, you, you look like you got cancer. I was like, mate, it's not something to joke about. Um, mm. Like, but that's what Australians say. Like they say ridiculous shit, right? Mm. As people start to lose weight. And it's like, no, no, you take a hiatus from those friends. Are they serving the compelling vision? Are they serving you to achieve this? No. Well, as you're trying to cement your new identity, because it is, it's a new identity. Remember, we're reinventing yourself. We're creating a new identity, guys. The fit dad version of you. The one who has an abundance, who can achieve anything in life. And because they aren't serving this, we need to then press pause on them, bring people in who do serve you, who remind you who you are capable of being, who say, when you say, no, oh, I can't be bothered, they say, yes, you can. They lift you up when you fall. They don't keep you down and go, oh, it's all right, mate. They're like, no, dude, like, you know, you fell on your face, get back up. We only miss one day. Let's keep going. Like they let, they, they make you be the best version of you. So press pause on the people who would detract, press play on the people who lift you up. If you don't have the people lifting you up in your community right now, sometimes you pay to play, like pay someone to be inside your community who will lift you up. Fit dads, right? And you're inside a community of people who want you to win at life right? That's it. Like you're around people, common humanity, just like you who are winning. So you can win just like you want to win. So I think that's a big thing. And that's what, what that's doing is that's crafting our environment. So we're crafting the one, the words coming into our head. So it's, you know, a sense of control, right? We can control the words coming into us to an extent by who we surround ourselves with. So we want to cut the slack. We want to drop the lower companions. We need to craft our environment and that will help us cement these character traits that we want.
Mm. And the biggest thing when it comes to people is you often uh, think about who would you like them to be and what who are they capable of being at their best. But if they're only at their best and they're only like the, oh, I really love, but I love hanging out with them when it's like this. It's like, well, that might be only 10% of the time that you spend with them when they're like that and they're supportive. And the rest of the time it might be, you know, just talking shit and drinking beers. And it's like a fucking every other, you know, Saturday night. If that's not serving you and that's not moving you forward, don't you, you again, it's where your focus goes. Oh, but you know, you're focusing on the 10% reason to keep them as opposed to the 90% reason to say, hey, you know, look, you know, in these 10% times, like when we maybe go, you know, go for a run together or do something like that, sure. Then it's like, I'm going to put pause on the beers. All right. You can, you can be selective with who you surround yourself with because you've just got to be honest and say, it's not. Like, it's just not the best for me right now. It's just not what's going to help me be. I've got some big goals. I've got some big stuff that I want to um, work towards. And right now, when I'm in that space, I don't like, you know, I don't like the behaviors I'm doing. And it just is not, I don't feel like it's moving me towards where I want to be. So I've just got to put pause. It's, it takes a lot of, you know, and most, and most people, if they are good enough friends, will say, oh, oh man, completely get it. Like, oh, I'd love to do something like that. Maybe something like that if they're a good friend. Um, and if they're not, and they're like, oh, you're just a soft cock or whatever, then it's like even more reason to cut them right they'll, they'll either support you or they'll give you exact reason why you've got to say nah fuck that guy dude, uh, and guys you have your how to win at life and your compelling vision for you and i mm. think like i i am so um cemented in my identity of what winning in life is for me that i have very uh, i have a, uh, very little compromise with it mm. it's like i know what makes me feel good i know what doesn't i know and everyone accepts me as well I think, hmm. and if they don't ex accept me, then I don't hang around them either because I don't, I, like, it, it is okay, right? I have a very small circle of friends because I don't have time for a large circle. And, like, that's the truth, right? Like, hmm. I know that, we all know that if we go out and it gets, like, 10, 11 o'clock, and everyone might listen to this go, man, you, you're, like, something wrong with you. I was like, no, there's nothing wrong with me at all. This is my win at life, not yours. I don't judge yours. You don't judge mine. But if we at someone's house and I get too tired and it's like 11 o'clock and they're still having some drinks, like I don't care if they're still having drinks. So, hey, guys, I'm just going to go lay down on the couch. No one judges me for it. And if they do, I don't care because I'm like, hey, this is me. I'm checking out. My, yeah. my small talk is done. Okay. <laughs> All used up. It's, it's like my small talk is used up for the day and it's nothing against you, but I'm going to go lay down now. It's like, you do that at people's houses, it's like 100%. Right? Why not? I don't care. My wife will tap me on the shoulder when she wants to go. Like I'm completely good with myself and who I am. And if people think I'm weird, that's completely fine. Or if I'm doing park run with Jax and I, me and Jackson have conversations where people don't see. So like if we're running, he's eight, just turned nine yesterday or two days ago. Um, like, you know, we're running and I'm running with my eight year old now, nine year old. He's like, dad, I'm, I'm tired. I'm like, man, we're running, we're running at a slower pace today. You can pick up that pace. Come on, move. He's eight years old. People look at me like, this dad's a lunatic. And I'm like, I'm like, I asked him before, what pace would you like to run at today? He tells me. And I'm like, I will always support you. And at the end of the run, like if he has a little bit of a breakdown during the run, like I'm like, I ask him and we reflect. It's like, did I push you the right way? Or would you like me to push you differently next time? We have these conversations. But if you look at it externally without having a look at the conversations we have, you're like, that guy's crazy. But I don't care if they think I'm crazy as long as my son feels that I'm motivating the, him the way he wants to be motivated. And the thing hmm. is, he gets better and better and better and loves running because he says, dad, can we go for a run? Someone who, hmm. does, you know what people who don't like to do things, they don't say, can I do this with you? The people who love it go, dad, can we go for another run? Or dad, if we're hmm. going to miss it, can we run on Sunday instead of doing park run? Because I don't like missing it. Like he loves it. He loves our time together. And he loves being better. And he does mm. even said to live, like, I couldn't do it last Saturday. He's like, um, park run. He's like, Liv said, oh, do you want to do park run? He goes, nah, I just want to do it with dad. Like, you know, he really pushes me. And it's like, it means I'm doing it right. And that's winning at life for me. Like, mm. and I think what you have to understand, guys, is we're not trying to impress upon you a version of life that you must have or that your way of life is wrong. All we're trying to help you is understand that there is different ways of life. And all we want you to do is have compelling visions to become the best version of you. And that could mm. be completely different to us. But 
I'm telling you right now, the best version of you is fit and healthy. The best version of you is inspiring your family. The best version of you has abundance of energy. The best version of you controls the responses to the stimulus of arguments. They control their responses to the stimuluses of other people and traffic and society. That is the best version of you. However that looks, I don't care. But the best version of you lives at a high vibration and a high frequency. And you know those people? that walk into a room and you can feel they're in the room. Not even, you, you don't even know that they walked in, but you can feel the different presence in that room. It's like they raise the vibration. And when you leave a conversation with them, you don't even know why, but you just feel better because you had a conversation with them. Like everyone can be that person. You know who isn't that person? Fucking victims who complain about fuck. Oh, it's too hot today. Oh, it's too cold. Today. Oh, it doesn't matter what the weather is. They'll complain about the weather, whether it's too hot, too cold, too mild, too, do anything. It's just not what they want. And that's something they a hundred percent can't control. Mm. Right. So the, what they're doing is they just want to complain. They want to be a victim, right? Life's happening always to them. You need to happen to life. You need to go, you know what? Yo, fucking watch out, Mother Nature. Fucking Travis Jones is here, right? Like, like it's like those, um, it's like old Chuck Norris jokes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like it's like he died five years ago, but Death's just afraid to tell him. <laughs> yeah, exactly, hundred percent, man. They were the best. Um, <laughs> but but I think that's the, that's the energy you need, mm. and you know it doesn't mean you're always going to be like that. It doesn't. Like I'm an introverted person, right? I'm ambivert, right? So yeah. you know, Liv gets the worst of me, um, but she also gets the best of me, okay? And sometimes I really need to decompress, but I think I'm, I'm very fortunate enough to have someone who's so supportive in my life. And again, I chose two people before Liv that weren't the right people right for me, and I was, fine, I was lucky enough to find like the love of my life, right? But I wasn't willing to settle. And I think, you know, don't settle for anything in your life. Don't settle mm. for shit health. Don't settle for shit relationships and don't settle for a shit job, right? Like, like just keep having a compelling vision of what your win at life is. And then you just create a plan and you create a character and identity and you assume that identity even before you are it. Because hmm. in a period of time, as we always say, Jace, right? Don't, uh, what's the trajectory quote? You go. Oh, it's um. Uh, don't be more concerned about your current trajectory than your current results. Exactly. So you have three hundred and sixty-five days, right? That's that can completely change, like a hockey stick, the trajectory of mm. your life, right? Rather than your current results, guys. So focus on that. We've been riffing and raffing for fifty-six minutes on this podcast today. Um, I hope we helped you understand. If not, gave you a bit of energy. I felt like I had some energy. Probably shout out cool. to Monster for you know a green yeah. monster today. I felt like a different flavor. If you want to sponsor me and Jace, if you can sponsor both of I'll us, I'll take it. I'll take it. Come on, Monster, give us some Monster cans. Otherwise, we'll go to uh, we'll go to Bang and we'll, we'll shop you guys against each <laughs> exactly. other. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but one thing we haven't done on this podcast is tell you exactly what to do. Because that's not for us to decide. We haven't told you to leave your job. We haven't told you to find a new partner or to go to the gym four times a week or whatever. We've just told you to take stock, to take ownership, to not stop lying to yourself and your kids. You know, more importantly than that, understand what you have control over, the stimuluses and the responses. We've just told you to set a vision and find like what the fuck is it that you want that lights you up? What does winning look like for you? Take stock of where you're at, take stock of where you want to be, and then just start moving towards it, knowing that, yeah, people that have been in worse positions than you have created better outcomes than you, so it is equally possible for you, right? And you don't need a tragic backstory to make it happen. You don't need to be, you know, an orphan to become Batman, right? Although I don't know if anyone would want to become Batman. He fucking never sleeps, right? How does he get that big by being nocturnal? I don't get it. All right. Anyway, happen. that's 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 my, my personal my personal gripes. <laughs> But guys, if you want help to win at life over the next 365 days, and, you, and guys, you don't wait till next year. You don't. Like, That's bullshit. To, like, you know when you know when's the best time to change your life? It's like right now. And the second best time to change your life is right now, right? So it's like, it's in the moment, right? Every second, it's a moment. Because all it is, is just one moment in time going, you know what, enough's a fucking enough. I'm taking ownership right now. That one moment in time will change your life because that's the moment where you decided to change your life. 
And I hope for anything that we help you create those moments on this podcast. It's like, yep, this is the moment right now. The pivotal moment that I've said, you know what? I'm tired of playing the mediocre version of me. And I'm going to become the athlete version of me. The one that has an unlimited potential. And you know what? I'm excited to find what that potential is. Like be excited about it. I think that's the cool thing. And if you want to help mm. with that, guys, go to fit-dad.club. That is fit dash dad dot club and book a call we can talk about where you are where you want to be how to close the gap together inspire you kick you in the ass um or hold a carrot in front of you whatever it is uh we will be there um to help you out so go book in a call we'll uh have a chat and help change your life leave a rating leave a review write a comment write something for us um on a on a podcast or on youtube or wherever you're watching this guys but that is it for me today um i hope you enjoyed it and jace over to you uh, last thing is if you do want to donate to the Movember for, uh, for CJ, make sure you check out the podcast description. The link will be in there for you. So, um, yeah, if you're going to donate at all, donate there. It's a really good cause and, uh, make his running worth something. Uh, definitely <laughs> make him validate the shit out of that. Exactly. All right, guys. Peace out. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Peace.